Hello Go Live in Physical Sciences learners and welcome back to another video with me Miss Martins. In today's video we're going to be looking at another exam paper question on intermolecular forces and physical properties. If you've missed the previous parts of this video series I will link them in the description box below but you want to stick around for the whole video because I give teacher tips along the way that will really help you level up your marks and not make silly mistakes. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Let's jump right to our questions. It says during an investigation the boiling points of the hydrides of two group VI, so I hope you know what VI means, that's group 6 elements, were determined. The result of the investigation are shown in the table below. So we've got compound P and Q, that's their formulae and that's the boiling point. We don't have the boiling point of compound P. First question, define the term boiling point. Now, boiling point is an absolutely vital definition that you need to know, and it is one that is asked in matric. If you don't say the definition as is, you will lose two marks. Now, this is the definition. It is as follows. Boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a substance equals the atmospheric pressure. Now, when I mark papers, when, when I mark my grade 11 papers and my grade 12 papers, remember I'm a teacher, I mark all the time, I see where students go wrong, often students don't say the temperature at which. Some students say the point at which the vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure, or they say it's when the vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. But boiling point is a temperature. If I ask you the boiling point of water, you say 100 degrees Celsius. If I ask you the freezing point of water, you say zero degrees Celsius. These things are temperatures. So your definition has to say temperature. Okay, very, very important. 3.2 says write down the dependent variable for this investigation. Now knowing what is dependent and independent and all of those things, that is very important in physics and chemistry. We can ask you this in almost every single one of your physics and chemistry exams. So how I remember it, the independent one is the variable that I change. Okay, so think I independent, I change. So I change it. I manipulate it, I decide on it before the experiment. So that would be, for example, the type of compound or the type of intermolecular force, maybe. The dependent variable is what I measure. So you just need to remember, dependence is what I measure. And what are we measuring in this experiment? We are measuring the boiling points. So the dependent variable for this investigation is boiling points. And when you write down a variable, it's always a good idea just to include the unit of measurement next to it like that. 3.3 says, write down the name of the strongest intermolecular force that exists between molecules of P and then Q. Now, as soon as you read intermolecular force, you need to know that those are not referring to bonds. It is not referring to a bond. Intramolecular is a bond. So they're speaking about things like London forces, dipole-dipole forces, hydrogen bonds. Those are the things that I'm speaking of and that you should be thinking of when you read intermolecular forces. Now, just a side note, all molecules, between all molecules, an intermolecular force that will always exist is London forces. So whether you have a non-polar molecule and a non-polar molecule, or a polar molecule and a polar molecule, London forces exist between all types of molecules. But say, for example, between, um, let's actually do this question. If we look at P, we've got H2S. So H2S to determine the intermolecular force besides London forces that exist between those, we need to ask ourselves, is it a polar molecule or is it a non-polar molecule? I hope you know that that is a polar molecule. How would you figure that out though if you don't already know? You would have to draw the Lewis dot diagram and that is what it would look like over here. And by the way, if you need help on drawing Lewis dot diagrams, I have lots of videos on that, so check out the links below. And you would have to know, okay, cool. So because there's one, two lone pairs on the central atom, this molecule will have an uneven charge distribution, which means it does not have a symmetrical charge distribution. It has an asymmetrical charge distribution, which means it's a polar molecule. And as soon as you have a polar molecule, the intermolecular forces that will exist between molecules of H2S and H2S are called dipole-dipole forces. Again, I have a whole video explaining how this works. So how do I know if it's polar, that it's dipole-dipole forces? 
check out that video if you need more help on that. But it's dipole-dipole forces. And then you always need to ask yourself, if it's a polar molecule and it's dipole-dipole forces, does it have the special type of dipole-dipole forces, which is hydrogen bonding? And again, in my intermolecular forces video, I go over hydrogen bonding is when a hydrogen is bonded to either a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. H NOF is how I remember it. So hydrogen bonding occurs when a hydrogen is bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. That is not the case in this situation because hydrogen is bonded to sulfur. So this is not hydrogen bonding. It's just normal dipole-dipole intermolecular forces. And if we take a look at Q, Q is water. And I hope that you know actually at this point in grade 11 that water is a polar molecule. Water also has dipole-dipole forces. This is what the Lewis dot diagram for water looks like. Literally the same as the one for H2S. Two lone pairs on the central atom, which means it has an asymmetrical charge distribution or an uneven charge distribution, which means it's a polar molecule, as I mentioned. It's a dipole, which means it consists of dipole-dipole forces. However, you get special type of dipole-dipole forces, as I just mentioned, called hydrogen bonding. And remember we said it's when a hydrogen bonds with either a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. And in this case, hydrogen is bonding with the oxygen. So the strongest type of intermolecular forces in water is one that we call hydrogen bonding. And just so you know, there are two sites for hydrogen bonding in water. Okay, there's a site over here and a site over here. Two sites for hydrogen bonding. Just be mindful of that for potential future questions. 3.4 says, will value X in the table? So the boiling point of P. Will it be equal to, less than, or greater than 100 degrees Celsius? And in the next question, I must fully explain the answer. Now, we just discussed the differences between H2S and H2O. We said, although they have the exact same shape, which, by the way, I didn't mention when I drew the Lewis dot diagrams, but the shape that it has is known as a bent or an angular shape. The reason why I know that is because it's got two lone pairs on the central atom and two bonding pairs. So the general formula is AX2, E2. Same thing here, AX2, E2. So same general formula, same molecular shape, but would they have the same boiling points? And I hope you're saying no, they won't have the same boiling points. Which one do we think would have a higher boiling points? Again, I hope you know the answer to this one. I hope, I hope you're saying water will have a higher boiling point. If you're saying that, then you're correct. So X should be less than 100 degrees Celsius. And why am I saying that? Why do you think that is? The reason why is because although both H2S, H2S, yes, and H2O, although both of the compounds are polar molecules, they both have dipole-dipole forces and London forces, but H2O also has hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest type of intermolecular force. And what you should know is the stronger the intermolecular force, stronger intermolecular force, more energy is needed to overcome the forces. Therefore, the boiling point for water will be higher. You can also argue it the other way. H2S only has dipole-dipole forces. It does not have hydrogen bonding, which means it has weaker intermolecular forces, which means it needs less energy to overcome the forces, which means it has a lower boiling point. So in questions like these, it is very important to mention the intermolecular forces present in both of them, which we, we already did in a separate question, so it's fine. Then mention which one is stronger. So you see they mention strength and then mention energy. 3.6 says the boiling point of the hydride of a third group 6 element, Se, is now determined. Will the boiling point of H2Se be equal to, less than, or greater than that of H2S? Remember, we're comparing H2S, H2O, and now H2Se. So if you take a look at the periodic table, remember they're all in the same group. There's oxygen, there's S, there's Se. Okay, so... Which one would have a higher boiling point, H2S or H2SE? Because S and SE and actually oxygen have the same number of valence electrons, which is six. 
Okay, we drew the Lewis dot diagrams earlier for H2O and H2S so we could see that. They both have six valence electrons means that their Lewis dot diagrams will basically look the same. They'll have the same molecular shape and all of that, so they'll be bent, okay? So they'll both be polar molecules, but which one would have a higher boiling point? I hope what you're doing now is you're saying, okay, they're both polar because they're both bent, so they're both polar molecules, so they both have dipole-dipole forces, but which one would have stronger dipole-dipole forces? I hope what you're doing now is you're looking at S, you're looking at the element S on the periodic table and you're looking at the element SE and you're comparing those two physical elements. So look at the mass of S, 32. Look at the mass of SE, 79. SE is bigger. It is a bigger atom. SE is a bigger atom than S. So although they'll both have dipole-dipole forces, SE will have stronger dipole-dipole forces because it's a bigger atom. There's your answer over there. 3.7 says, will the boiling point of ammonia, NH3, be equal to less than or greater than 100 degrees Celsius? Fully explain the answer. So first of all, NH3 ammonia. If I have to draw the Lewis dot diagram, nitrogen has five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. Hydrogen is three, one, two, three. We share over there, we share over there, and we share over there. The shape of this molecule, there's one lone pair on the central atom. So it is AX3, okay, one, two, three hydrogens that it's bonded with, with AX3, E. E is the bonding pair. This is trigonal or trigonal pyramidal. That's the shape. Because of that lone pair on the central atom, this one over here, NH3 or ammonia also has an asymmetrical charge distribution, not an even charge distribution, which means it's a polar molecule. Because it's a polar molecule, it means that it has dipole-dipole forces between the molecules. And go back to that special type of dipole-dipole forces called hydrogen bonding. Does NH3 have hydrogen bonding? Yes, because remember we said hydrogen bonding is when a hydrogen bonds with a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Here we have a hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen, hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen. So, ammonia has hydrogen bonding between its molecules. Okay, so not only does it have dipole-dipole forces, it has that special type of dipole-dipole forces called hydrogen bonding. So we want to know, is the boiling point of ammonia greater than 100 degrees Celsius? So basically, we're comparing ammonia to water. We want to know if ammonia has stronger intermolecular forces than water. If it does, then it'll have a greater boiling point than 100 degrees Celsius. But if ammonia has weaker intermolecular forces, then it'll have a lower boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Now, how do I compare the intermolecular forces between ammonia and water? Well... Both ammonia and water have hydrogen bonding between their molecules. And we actually need to say that not only do both of them have hydrogen bonding between their molecules, they both have London forces as well. Remember, everything has London forces. So if they both have hydrogen bonding between their molecules, how do I know which of the two have stronger hydrogen bonding? Well, it's all got to do with the sites of hydrogen bonding. Remember earlier I mentioned that water has two sites for hydrogen bonding. Basically, water has two sites for hydrogen bonding means that there's two places where one water molecule can join to other water molecules. So this has two sites or two spaces, we say sites, for hydrogen bonding. Whereas ammonia only has, ammonia is NH3, remember? Ammonia only has one site for hydrogen bonding. So the more sites you have for hydrogen bonding, the more hydrogen bonds you have, and therefore the stronger hydrogen bonds you have. And if you have stronger hydrogen bonds, you need more energy to overcome those um, forces. Um, the stronger, yeah. So the more sites for hydrogen bonding you have, the stronger hydrogen bonding you have. So the stronger intermolecular forces, which means you need more energy to overcome those forces. We always say energy to overcome the forces. You never say break. 
please, we don't break forces, we break bonds. So more energy to overcome the forces, therefore higher boiling points. So just so you know, water has two sides, ammonia is one side, and something like alcohol like this. And alcohol is something that you're often tested in in your practicals as well. Alcohol can be like ethanol or methanol, also only one site for hydrogen bonding. So what we will then say is because they both have hydrogen bonding and London forces between their molecules, you must remember that water has two sites for hydrogen bonding. Ammonia has one site. So compare the difference in sites. Therefore, water has more sites for hydrogen bonding. So it has stronger hydrogen bonds. So we mentioned the difference in sites, then mentioned that ammonia has weaker intermolecular forces. So we're basically mentioning strength, so compare the strength for me. And because NH3 has weaker intermolecular forces, it requires less energy to overcome the forces, which means it has a boiling point of less than 100 degrees Celsius. There we go, that's my full answer. So you get a mark for saying less than 100. You get a mark for saying the intermolecular forces in both is hydrogen bonding in London, you get a mark for comparing the sites, you get a mark for comparing the strength and the energy. It's very, very important to remember the recipe question like this. Tell me the intermolecular forces in both. Tell me about sites or if one is bigger than the other or whatever. Tell me about the strength, so which one has weaker forces, which one has stronger forces, and then tell me about energy. Always mention strength followed by energy. I really hope that this question was helpful for you. I know that my videos are a little bit on the longer side, but I also like to explain and emphasize where I, as I go along so that you don't make mistakes in your exam if you get different questions to this one. Um, I hope to see you in another video very soon, everybody. Bye.